After uploading videos of games for the Acorn, BBC Micro and the Electron, it's occurred to me that a lot of viewers outside of the UK aren't familiar with these machines, so I decided to do a video about them. It all started off in 1980 with the Acorn Atom. This was Acorn's first home machine. That They'd made some other ones before that, probably for enthusiasts, maybe business. But anyway, the Atom sold between 1980 and 81. Um, it was a cut-down System 3, that was one of their earlier machines. It used the MOS Technology 6502 and it sold in kit form uh, for £120 or a ready-made one for £170. You could buy a fully expanded pre-made machine for, or oh, they were over £200. Uh, fully expanded they had 12K of RAM, a floating point expanded ROM. Um, the basic machine only had 2K of RAM with 8K of ROM. They had built-in BASIC, uh, but they also had 6502 assembly language, which could be included into BASIC code, which was very unusual for the time. Um, I don't have one of those, sadly. There's a picture here of one. Um, they're very hard to find on eBay these days. Um, they didn't sell in huge numbers. You'd be lucky to find one now for less than £70. I want one. Um, yeah, one day, maybe. They're kind of fragile. They're, it's a worry getting one of those through the post because they're, I've, I've read a lot of cases where people have bought them and coming through the post the chips have become unseated and they don't work. So quite fragile, but historically very important. Moving swiftly on. This is the Acorn BBC Model B, uh, released in late 1981. The Model A, which was more or less exactly the same as this, but only had 16K, they sold for £299, and this, the Model B, with 32K of RAM, sold for £399. They have a 2 MHz 6502. They were originally called the Proton, um, by Acorn, and then the BBC ran, shall I say, a contest put out for tender. They they wanted a machine to run on educational TV programmes, and Acorn won the contest. Um, I mean, they were competing with Sinclair, who put forward the New Brain, and the BBC decided no, that was far too fragile. The BBC matched or bettered all of the required specifications. Um, very solid machine, it can take a real pounding, and it had to because they were uh, pretty much all the schools in the UK picked up the BBC as their school computer. Um, or when I was in school, this was you know, if your school had computers, it had these. Um, <clears throat> oh, there are a load of models of this. I mean, the A and B were the first ones, and I still consider this the BBC B to be the definitive BBC Micro. Then there was the B plus 64, basically the same thing but with 64k of RAM. The B plus 128, same again. The Master 128, which had, I believe, increased expandability. And the Master Compact, I don't know an awful lot about that one. About 1.5 million of these were sold. Uh, I'll just show, give, give you a close look here. I hope this is going to stay in focus. You've got an expansion thing here. This one's still sealed off. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that's for ROM expansion adapters. You plug an adapter in there and then you can stick extra ROM stuff in that, <coughs> I believe. On the back, TV out, video out, RGB port, RS423, uh, don't know what that is cassette output input analog input that's for uh, joysticks econet that was a uh, that was like a networking thing that they had on these I don't know how widely used they were but you could network loads of uh, BBC's together I suspect these had some expansion capability there as well I don't know I don't know exactly what they were for Lots of expansions that you could add internally. Um, 
You could add a second CPU to these. The most common one was the Zilog Z80. Um, later on they they had like an add-on board and you could fit an ARM RISC chip to these. Um, it was used for developing the ARM RISC chip and I will talk more about that later. In 1983, following the success of the BBC Model B, Acorn decided they needed a smaller, cheaper machine, something that could compete with the Sinclair Spectrum. So they brought out this, it's the Acorn Electron. Uh, they sold for £199 initially, though the price did drop considerably after a time. It's powered by the 6502A with a variable speed between 0.5 MHz and 2 MHz. Um, this takes the architecture of the BBC and crams it all into one single ULA chip, hence it being considerably smaller. Um, what else can I tell you? Yeah, when these were released, that they promoted it very well. Everyone knew about it. All these kids who would have loved the BBC B, you know, their, their school had got them, they wanted them, their parents couldn't afford them, they decided, yep, we'll get one of these. But demand completely outstripped supply. Um, people were putting in pre-orders and weren't getting them for ages. And by the time Acorn had made enough of them to match demand, supposedly, demand had dried up, people had got sick of waiting for them. And that really damaged sales of them and it, it never fully recovered. Having said that, sales of games were really good. Um, over 500 games were made for the Electron. Um, new software was still being developed into the early 90s. Um, at its peak, the Electron was the third best-selling computer in the UK. Um, though quite how long its peak lasted, I'm not sure. The, as you can see, or maybe you can see, it's a much, much smaller computer. There's a lot less stuff in here, as I've said. It, the, the hardware is all crammed onto one chip. But what you don't have is all the um, the expandability. I mean, all those ports that were on the back of the BBC are not there. You've got a, you've got the tape port, you've got a monitor port, then there's just a, a video out and TV out. On the back, you've got this one expansion port, which you could put, you could get adapters that would allow you to run ROM cartridges, printers, um, I think there was maybe a disk drive, something like that. But it's, Hardware-wise, it's vastly more limited than the BBC, but again, it was vastly cheaper. Largely just got used as a games machine, and a very good one at that. I'm very, very fond of this machine. In 1987, after developing the ARM wrist chip on the BBC, Acorn brought out a series of computers known commonly as the Archimedes. Uh, they had memories ranging from 512K to 16 megs. Um, they could run BBC Basic and emulate BBC hardware, so I suspect you could run your BBC software on them. This one sadly doesn't work, so I can't show you any software for it, but there is a guy, Pete Van Peebles, I'll type his name up in titles so you can see how to spell that. He's got a channel that's full of games for the Archimedes on his channel. Um, well worth taking a look at, it's very interesting. Um, this particular machine, the A3310, it was probably the most popular model, certainly for home consumers. It was competing with the Amiga 1200 and the Atari ST. And they're, capability-wise, they're really quite comparable. They're, they're good. They're possibly more powerful than the bulk standard 1200. Now, Acorn were broken up in 1998. Their hardware really wasn't selling well. Um, and what was left of them became ARM, known at the time as um, Acorn Risk Machines. Uh, that changed to Advanced Risk Machines. They made ARM chips. Um, they now account for 90% of embedded 32-bit Risk CPUs. They basically developed a chip that was used in the Archimedes that was developed on the BBC Micro. And they're now in mobile phones. Uh, PDAs, all that kind of thing. Um, you may be surprised to know the chips that are in the GP2X 
or the Nintendo DS or the iPod Touch or the iPhone 3GS are all developments of the ARM chip. Um, Who would have thunk it? Uh, ARM don't actually produce the chips themselves. They design them and then license the technology. Other companies pick them up. And uh, yeah, goes all the way back to the Acorn Atom and earlier. Without those, where would our mobile phones be now? Probably using something entirely different and not nearly as cool. But there you have it. Um, there are videos on my YouTube channel of software for the BBC and Acorn Electron. I'm adding more to those as I go along. Um, there's also a video there, if you don't know already, of my console and computer collection. So take a look at that if you're interested. Uh, link to my website there as well. Thank you for watching.